You're listening to the Caramel Apples Podcast, a retro trek of all things warmly nostalgic 70s and 80s pop culture and beyond. I'm Kennedy Rizzo. And I'm Cooper Lee. And we're so excited that you pushed play and decided to join us this week. When speaking of retro entertainment, variety shows were quite the mainstay back when. Get ready to dive into the Carmelicious retro favorite, that of Hee Haw. Each and every week with all of our caramelicious retro topics. We like to get <laughs> retro. We sure do. We don't mess around. <laughs> it's a caramel mess. <laughs> and this week is no different. For variety shows presented for constant entertainment back in the day, really went hand in glove. Variety shows gained popularity and picked up rapid speed, I believe, starting in the 50s. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so, thankfully, we don't go back that far. But, uh... Not even. <laughs> <laughs> Not super clear on that either, but that sounds about safe enough. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with it. <laughs> and, and the variety show genre was seen in all facets of entertainment, even in kid shows and cartoons but many a popular show or 10 came under the umbrella term for entertainment. Mm -hmm. As we'll see play out this week. This week, we're excited to discuss the fun and wonder contained in a particular enjoyable variety show with a country bend. And that was Hee Haw! <laughs> oh my goodness, Hee Haw! <laughs> <laughs> Man, Hee Haw was such a mainstay to behold in our household each Saturday evening. Oh, yeah. Saturday evenings were loyally dedicated to all things country. <laughs> I know. Big, okay, big shock, huh, folks? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. No. Our folks loved and always loved themselves some country music, didn't they, Cooper? Oh, yeah, they really did. <laughs> they still do. They really do. <laughs> <laughs> We'd watch, like, the Grand Ole Opry, Dolly Parton, I think had a variety show that we always watched and she'd sing her iconic song, I'll Always Love You. Yeah, she did, she did. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. You know what? Great memories indeed. <laughs> Saturday night programming was epic. It surely was, Coop. Better, much calmer times in a sense. You know, at least from a youthful perspective. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of exciting highlights and details to share with the Orchard Archivers this week. So let's get started, shall we? Yeah. So this is going to be so very nostalgic. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> so Hee Haw is an, an American television variety show featuring country music and humor with the fictional rural Cornfield County as the backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> its first run aired on uh, CBS Network from 1969 to 1971. Then in syndication from 1971 to 1993, mm -hmm. which is surprising that it went that long. Yeah, you just like you don't think about that when you're living it. Yes, that is impressive. Probably because we also moved to other things that we were watching. <laughs> but you know, at the time, it seemed like it was just mainly when we were really, really small. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, on TNN from 1996 to 1997, so you can see that He Hall has had an impressive. Quite a long run here and there over the years. Okay, that's correct. Hee Haw, a mixture of music and comedy skits, those being a staple of the syndicated television lineup for more than 20 years. Goodness, talk about having some staying power. Right you are, Cooper. Originally, the show had aired on CBS, but was canceled in 1971 because the network thought it was, get this, too rural? <laughs> what? You just told my wish. <laughs> what? Yeah, what are you? <laughs> <laughs> that is the premise. Yeah. I a 
yeah. got a green light, so now what? Okay. Hollywood was always kind of weirdos, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Some of the creative execs were smoking something. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I always find it, you know, comical how the top dogs think tanks, you know, really kind of overthink things. They do. It still do. Oh, my gosh. You know, if they fall outside of their we have blinders on type of perspective outlook, um, like Hollywood seems to have always kind of had blinders on, didn't they? Yeah. And it's crazy. And we've talked about this very point other notable Orchard Trek retros. Um, but then when creative execs huff and puff, but then decide to take a gamble on XYZ, XYZ goes viral in essence and gets a lot of attention and adoration. Now it becomes a really big hit. Yeah. Then the networks and the creative execs want to pat themselves on the back (laughs) because now they have the biggest thing going and, oh, we knew this was going to work and blah, blah, blah. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> you know, and like you said, we've talked about this in other shows before, how it it, it kind of seemed like out of left field. It was yeah. an idea that someone really was struggling to kind of get yeah. pushed. And when it finally did get the green light, then they're like, well, where have you been, old buddy, old pal? Exactly. It's like, well, this could have been going on already. Yeah, they need to take more of a gamble, I think, because yes. I don't know what that is. That's strange. The, the formula's backwards. It is. It's kind of silly. It, it is very silly. <laughs> <laughs> so, to my rule... <laughs> to rule my eye... <laughs> <laughs> how about some caramel to dunk those early doubts in? <laughs> <laughs> Terribly crazy. But thank goodness they were wrong because now, not only did we get to watch weekly all the fun to be had that played out on Hee Haw... But now we get to finally recall all of the warm memories we treasured and can recall from watching Hee Haw. Mm -hmm. Win-win in a nutshell. Yeah. Hee Haw was a good, clean, family-oriented series that you could let your kids watch without embarrassment. Mm -hmm. That's one of the selling factors of why our parents enjoyed it. But it was fairly kid-friendly as well. Yeah, I agree that it was hokey and corny. (laughs) (laughs) And that too. (laughs) But what of it? You know, if it made you laugh and feel good? Yeah. Um, that is what mindless entertainment is supposed to do for people. <laughs> it serves as a refreshing escape from the hustle and bustle of day-to-day life. You know, and Hee Haw showcased some of the most amazing performers of the country and Western music world. It was said that it was like the TV version of Nashville's legendary Grand Ole Opry we mentioned a moment ago. We sure did. Yeah, we saw country music giants perform on this series, which we'll get into much more detail on such ones here momentarily, like Roy Clark, Buck Owens, <laughs> Lulu Roman, Little Jimmy Dickens, and Grandpa Jones. <laughs> we'll dig deeper on a couple of these stars shortly. I know we will. <laughs> Hee Haw was more than an entertaining variety show. It was a cultural and legendary phenomenon. I challenge you to quiz anyone coming or going who hasn't heard of or watched Hee Haw. <laughs> so, Kennedy, <laughs> could you imagine if someone actually said no? my wish. Oh my god. From around our generation or older? <laughs> <laughs> then these ones have definitely been dwelling under the biggest rock known to man. You said it word. <laughs> the younger generations, maybe. But not from our time. How embarrassing that would be. Yeah, yeah. They they might not want to put their hand up on it. <laughs> yeah. Hee Haw proved you should never underestimate cornball factor number nine. <laughs> Hee Haw was just that. All cornball, slapstick, T and A, along with great country music peppered throughout. And Coop, people ate it up. Much of the series' appeal also came from its fair amount of satire and the cast members' unerring ability to laugh at themselves. <laughs> Very important, the viewers never got the impression that anyone felt demeaned by any of it. See, Cooper, this is the type of humor and entertainment I enjoy and appreciate. Yeah. I like that light and airy feel to things. Yeah, because we need it desperately. We really do. <laughs> Life gets heavy. <laughs> 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 and in the majority of each week's show segments included a bevy of skits, 
blackouts and corny jokes. <laughs> However, the meat of Hee Haw came from its music. Yeah. Every week, two or three country music stars guest. Um, and usually one or two of the guests being well-established, the others newer and up-and-coming stars as well, featuring bluegrass, country, gospel, and other acts. Singers and musicians popular with country audiences. Mm -hmm. This was baked into the Offering Weekly. Yeah. Reruns of Hee Haw were broadcast on RFD TV from September 2008 to April 2020 and aired on Circle. The show was inspired by Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, but centered on country music, rural rather than pop culture inspired humor, and with far less topical material. Hosted by a couple of country music artist powerhouses at the time for most of its run, and we'll get more into depth here momentarily, the series was equally well known for its component corn pone, or <laughs> that word's unsophisticated, <laughs> humor, as well as showcasing voluptuous, scantily clad women known as the Hee Haw Honeys, uh, wearing stereotypical farmer's daughter's outfits. Gotta make sure that fine gentleman folk get their expected dose of eye candy. <laughs> <laughs> and they usually had to make way for that here. Hee Haw's appeal, however, was not limited to a rule-only audience. Mm -hmm. See, I like this note of interest, too, right here. <laughs> Hee Haw was successful in all major markets, like network-based Los Angeles and New York City, okay. as well as Boston and Chicago. Mm. We'd like to mention that other niche programs like Soul Train, which we did do a whole episode on, so please check that out. Check it out. Good signs. <laughs> and also a show called The Lawrence Welker Show. Okay. Hmm, never heard of that one. Uh-uh. Me either. But both of these targeted older, more mature black audiences, respectively, and rose to prominence in syndication during the same era as Hee Haw. Oh. As we said, <laughs> Hee Haw was curiously inspired by the earlier mentioned show Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In. But much like Laugh-In, the series minimized production costs by taping all of the reoccurring sketches for a season in batches, mm. setting up the cornfields that one day, the joke fence on another, and so forth. Hee Haw at its height had a season's worth of shows recorded over the course of two separate week-long shoots and then assembled in the editing suite. Wow. Pretty cool. Yeah. So only the musical performances were taped with a live audience. Which they did do more of that back then. You know, doing things in front of a live studio audience. Oh, sure did. And also, in crazy cool retro fashion, a laugh track was included to all of the other pre-recorded segments. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and true to the standout theme or background of the show, it was noted that Hee Haw was taped for the CBS network in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. Then later at Opryland, USA, in the city's Donaldson area. Uh, the series was produced by Young Street Productions through the mid-80s and later produced by Gaylord Entertainment, which was responsible for distributing Hee Haw in syndication. Hee Haw's creators, Frank Pepiat and John Aylesworth, were both Canadian-born writers who had extensive experience in writing for variety shows. Their creative resume is quite impressive, inspired prior huge success of other well-known rural sitcoms of the 60s. Now that's going back some years, Kennard. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and some of these well-known offerings included Green Acres, mm -hmm. The Andy Griffith Show, and The Beverly Hillbillies, which all had their flair of country parroting. The creative execs sought to craft a variety show basically catering to that same audience, Although the twist was that neither gentleman had a firm grasp on rural comedy. <laughs> Rip <Ripping> that out. <laughs> so how was the undertaking going to play out? <laughs> well, if you're aiming to make an award-winning caramelicious cake, you got to focus on obtaining or using the right ingredients. Uh -huh. So our creative execs went to work. They selected a pair of hosts who well represented each side in what was described as a divide in country and Western music at the time. 
Fun fact, our two chosen hosts, Kennard, whose names the moment upon hearing them is literally synonymous with the amazingly entertaining show we've been discussing, Hee Haw. Those two host names were Roy Clark and Buck Owens. Buck Owens! <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> this is how crazy we were as children. Okay, we would be singing another song to a very popular show that we watched all the time, The Love Boat. We did a show on that already. <laughs> um, but we would be singing the song as little kids. Yes. And when we get to the end of the Love Boat theme song. That's what it was. <laughs> it was Love Boat. <laughs> Welcome aboard. It's love. Doo -doo 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 and then we would say, fuck <laughs> Yeah, not Owens. <laughs> not Owens. But Owens. <laughs> so. <laughs> but Owens. We don't know why. It just was what it was. We were kids, you know, and you tend to just parrot things. You hear things yeah. in your house and we just parroted it and it kind of went together. Oh, so wow. We were special little folk. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> we know it's nuts. We hope we gave you a good laugh because we are we just that crazy yeah, yeah but yes buck owens <laughs> it was his name but it was buck Owen, as far as we were concerned for you know singing yes. that song so that's right thought we'd share it <laughs> well the actual real background on buck owens <laughs> is um he was a prominent architect of a california-based bakersfield sound um, which was one of the biggest country hit makers of the 60s. That's neat. Yeah, go on. Okay. Our next heavy hitter host is Roy Clark. He had worked in Las Vegas and Washington, D.C. and was hardworking, as well as loyal in Nashville's Music Row, which allowed him to be known and deeply connected with his skill at mixing music and his onstage comedy. So that's a nice segue into this next fun fact. Okay. As one of the country music's most beloved entertainers, did you know that Roy Clark began playing the banjo, guitar, and mandolin at, an, at a tender age? Okay. After a few years of hitting the teenage years, he won two national banjo championships, uh, with his second win launching him into an appearance at the Grand Ole Opry. Oh. But wait, there's more. Okay. Fun fact number two. Roy Clark also was named the CMA's Entertainer of the Year in 1973 and Musician of the Year in 1977, 78, <laughs> and in 1980. Oh, wow. Yeah. The Grand Ole Opry had come and tapped Mr. Clark on the shoulder once again, for he became a member of that in 1987. Very impressive. It most certainly is. Thanks for sharing those cool fun facts. Now, so we've established the two chosen hosts that helm the stage for our weekly Hee Haw offerings. Hee Haw wasn't these two first rodeos together in show business, though. The duo, too, had been previous regular guests on the, the Jimmy Dean Show, also created and written by our aforementioned Canadian-born creative execs. <laughs> A nice and appropriate precursor to our intriguing deep dive on Hee Haw this week we now have a better picture of what and who helped fuel the massive media successes the series became. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. If this episode entertained you, please share it. Spread the word. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your continued support. Now, back to the show. into our nostalgic perspective and peer into uh, how things on Hee Hall was set up. Okay. Uh, the sets were very memorable and can easily recall how colorful and aesthetically pleasing so many of the segments were. <laughs> I mean, you know, the presentations 
music were definitely made to entertain the adults choosing to tune in. Mm -hmm. But really, Hee Haw was family friendly too. So entertaining and lively, it drew in a younger audience as well. It did, uh huh. Especially when it came to the sing alongs. <laughs> <laughs> what was Hee Haw all about? It is set in the fictional Cornfield County, a rural farming community in an unspecified state down in the southern United States. The series sketches that played out each week centered around the day in the life visits to local businesses and establishments in the country, all the while showcasing the offbeat, eccentric characters who both live and work there. <laughs> A, a barn interior set was used as the main stage for most of the actual musical performances from Hee Haw's premiere until the debut of the Hee Haw Honky Tonk skit in the early 80s. <laughs> okay. Afterwards, the Hee Haw Honky Tonk served as the main stage for the remainder of the show's run. <laughs> Fun fact, host Buck Owens... <laughs> 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 Sorry, Mr. Owens. Mr. Owens. Owens. <laughs> <laughs> Began using the barn interior set for his performances after it was replaced by the Hee Haw Honky Talk set and was appropriately renamed Buck's Place. A crazy cool nod to one of uh, Mr. Owens' actual hits entitled Sam's Place. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Other settings for the musical performances throughout Hee Haw's stint included a haystack <laughs> where the cast in its entirety performed songs. Gosh, I totally remember the haystack performances. Yeah, those are pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> There's also the living room of a Victorian house, uh, the front porch or lawn of the Samuel B. Sternwheeler home, uh, a grist mill, a mill for grinding grain, uh, that was where Roy Clark, host Roy Clark, performed a number of his songs in earlier seasons of Hee Haw. Uh, and one of my all-time favorite sets that I could watch on repeat <laughs> was the railroad or the train depot um, set. <laughs> this is originally where Buck Owings... <laughs> <laughs> he performed his songs before acquiring Buck's Place, as you had mentioned there, Coop. <laughs> yes. So this retro country inspired showcase gave refreshing spotlights right there on commercial television all throughout its run for highlighting key samplings of country, bluegrass, gospel, and other styles of traditional American music. Um, each and every week. Uh-huh, right, right. And this gave platform to plenty of elite standout performances that were grabbing at success, popularity, and legacy of Hee Haw in order to reach a broader audience of rural, southern, and diehard music fans alike. Mm -hmm. So we've described here the allure and sheer popularity Hee Haw had with its loyal fans, and it's not a stretch as to why. <laughs> but we were among them, and but check this out. Fun fact, although Hee Haw was pretty popular with the fans, but did you know that despite that fact, the critics did not, I repeat, did not warm to or appreciate Hee Haw at first. Oh, shucks. <laughs> There's those buzzkill critics at their shady shenanigans once again. <laughs> Thank goodness the loyalty of the fans struck a positive chord in regards to the series. Yeah. See, this is a neat development because although Hee Haw had a clear niche audience as its focus, the entertainment to be had while watching Hee Haw truly spilled out to a broader audience outside of said niche. Country music was the primary genre of music, not only for the show, but it was trending white hot all throughout pop culture during that fun era. But other genres of music, like big band, rock and roll oldies, even some pop music was offered. Now, let's play out some of the more popular, notable segments showcased, shall we? Oh yes, here we go. <laughs> so most of our retro episodes, we speak of the powerful effect of the theme song of XYZ. Mm -hmm. And Hee Haw is no different. It really is one of the sharper, more familiar aspects of the show. <laughs> I agree. Each week in the early seasons, a comedic duet, Archie Campbell and Gordy Tapp, sang the song, Where Are You Tonight? Which goes... 
Where, where, oh, where are, are you tonight? tonight? <laughs> Why, Why did you leave me here all alone? <laughs> I searched the world over and thought I found true love. You met another and you were gone. <laughs>
These skits and many, many more were such an organic source of entertainment. <laughs> You're so right. <laughs> there were a lot of memories we can recall. Yes. Many a skit to be had. <laughs> In gloom, despair, and agony on me, the four castmates you just mentioned would sit around in, shall we say, country or farming fashion, <laughs> <laughs> surrounded by none other than moonshine jugs, looking utterly miserable. Oh, no. <laughs> Convenient, the song began with the chorus, which all of them sang, with each one alternating a pitiful, mournful howl after each of the, the first three lines. Okay. Remember, misery. Agony on me. <laughs> <laughs> the quartet began by singing the chorus together, followed by each quartet member reciting some humorous reason for his misery in spoken form. <laughs> then in the first few earlier seasons, the quartet reprised the chorus, and get this, this is cute. In with all <laughs> for sobbing in a typical exaggerated manner. <laughs> These types of presentations were abundant on Hee Haw and easily urged we, the audience, to join in on the fun each and every week. You know, I know we've covered quite a few of the shining details and memories of Hee Haw on this week's Orchard Truck Retro. <laughs> and there's so many segments that just warm our country hearts as we go back in our memories and reminisce on some. Oh, yeah. But uh, are any of the skits that you personally enjoyed that we haven't yet mentioned? Oh, uh, well, you asked me too fast, Coop. <laughs> Give me a second, will ya? I gotta put on my retro thinking cap. <laughs> okay, so while you're doing that, I'll go ahead and share a couple before we wrap up our discussion on Hee Haw this week. Okay. So, I like the little yellow chicken. <laughs> which is an animated baby chicken who always sweetly mistook any and everything for an egg. That is adorable. That <laughs> is cute, isn't it? <laughs> I also enjoy the quilt with Minnie Pearl giving romantic advice to several of Hee Haw honeys uh, while spending time sitting in a circle making quilts. Okay. And Mom loved this one. Okay. <laughs> The Hambone Brothers doing some romantic knee oh, slapping. Oh, 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 oh. oh, she did. Yeah. She could do the Hambone. She sure could. Yeah, with her little southern self. <laughs> Those are some great choices there, Coop. A couple of mine I'd like to share with you. Oh, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready now. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah, I'm trying to clear the smoke away still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and also with our orchard archivers that I enjoyed are the um, Grandpa and Minnie's Kitchen, uh, which ran throughout most of the 70s and was incredibly glib <laughs> and cute because they'd spoof various popular television shows at the time where Grandpa Jones and Minnie Pearl uh, delivered hilarious recipes <laughs> that made absolutely no sense. I also enjoyed the cornfield where cast members, as well as guest stars, would randomly <laughs> pop up from the fictional cartoonish cornfield setting to tell jokes and one-liners. I remember well the cornfield skit, Kenner. Those were great. They were! <laughs> so piggybacking off of that memory, I have a quick fun fact to share. Okay. Fun fact. Did you know that David Ackerman a.k.a. String Bean, played the field scarecrow, delivering one-liners before being projected down by a crow parked on his shoulder. <laughs> but here's the tea. After he and his wife were murdered during a robbery at their home in 1973... Did you just say murder? I did. String Bean was not replaced but was tastefully uh, represented with a wooden scarecrow that was seen in the field as a nod in memory to him. Oh my God, that's crazy. Uh, very interesting things we stumble on when doing our deep dive into any Orchard Trek retro. I don't know, interesting, but deeply sad all at the same time. Yeah. I also liked Archie's Angels. Oh my goodness, you know, <laughs> this was a <laughs> parody of the popular Charlie's Angels. And Let's Truck Together, which reflected the CB trending radio craze of the late 70s. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, as kids, we enjoyed more animated critters. And 
Who was one of the standout animated critters there, Coop? Well, that would be the ever-present Hee Haw Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> that would bounce clever quips like, Wouldn't that dunk your hat in the creek? Or certain animals carried appropriate signs containing a smart mouth quip back to out clever Hee Haw Donkey <laughs> holding the sign saying, I'm looking for Shee Haw. Or in later seasons, let us let us bray. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of she hauls, who were the hee-haw honeys? Yeah, and you were just talking about hee-haw looking for she-haw or she-haw honeys. <laughs> this is just a slight disclaimer. This is an orchard disclaimer, but, you know, this is what it was back then. Yeah. You know, hee-haw, she-haw, whatever. Like, that's just what it was back then. So don't come at us. Don't attack us, please. Yes. Because we're just really recalling what pop culture was back then and what was in our retro memories. We're just sharing our memories. <laughs> so this is what it was. Yes. So, you know. <laughs> it's all in good fun. It's all in good fun. <laughs> <laughs> but noted as being part of the Honey family, daughters of Lulu and Kenny Honey, brother Willie, Billy Honey. <laughs> but the Hee Haw Honeys include, uh, let's see, we have Victoria Hallman, a Misty Rowe, Jackie Waddell, Irene Mandrell. Nope, that was Earlene Mandrell. <laughs> Ganilla Hutton, Lisa Todd, Linda Thompson. Uh, she was actually, and I should have let you do this, Coop, but that's a fun fact. She was married to Bruce Jenner uh -huh. at the time, the, the former Bruce Jenner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, again, this is in the past. Uh, Barbie Benton, uh, Diana Goodman, and Kathy Johnson are better known as Kathy Lee Gifford. Crazy. Yeah, that Kathy Lee. Wow. <laughs> she was actually a he all honey in the early days. <laughs> who, who knew, right? <laughs> yeah. So one more fun fact to share before we tie up our intriguing discussion on he haul this week. Fun fact. He Haw featured at least two, sometimes three, or four guest stars each week. Ah. Yeah. While most of the stars were country music stars, um, a good number of other genre celebrities were showcased on Hee Haw as well, such as actors, actresses, sports stars, and politicians. Well, this was an awesome nostalgic trek this week, Kennedy. It was. Yeah, good times. We've recounted so much caramelicious goodness about so many of the fond, deeply burned in memories from recent years when watching Hee Haw. <laughs> Known for its campy jokes and entertaining country themed skits, this retro gem ran on air for over 20 years. Uh, yeah, and a show that, that due to the PC correctness overload in modern times, Sadly, probably couldn't be made or aired today, unfortunately. Yeah, you aren't lying on that. Mm -mm. But thankfully, we got to enjoy all the nostalgia, you know, contained within its weekly Saturday night offerings. He being um, what set it apart and stood out from the competition at the time. The country music along with all of the notable stars and acts that appeared on Hee Haw over the years. Yeah. Hee Haw was a good time. It really was. And, you know, we're so glad to have come up during a time that had wholesome television shows like Hee Haw. It's not only our memories of this series, but the real proof is in the ratings and impressive run in syndication as it gave the audience a comedic glimpse into rural culture. Hee Haw easily became one of the most beloved television shows of all time. Wait, wait, wait. Fuck on! <laughs> this week's episode? Well, the answer is simple. To tune into future treks into the Orchard Archives, meet up with us here next week. Same time, same place at the Sweet Spot. And it would mean the world to us if you could rate, leave us a shiny review and feedback. Spreading the word really is the best way to grow our podcast and explore more iconic memories. Thank you.